Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and today we're going to be talking about my personal favorite investment right now which is STEM Inc. because today they announced their Q1 financial results. And this is the first time that we get to see an in-depth audited, albeit some of this information we'll see today is unaudited, but the first time we get to see some SEC filing level of earnings and results that we can actually take a deep dive into a company that is expecting more than 300% revenue growth. Keep in mind that the revenues that we saw today are a delivery of some of that contracted backlog, which has been so important for us to look at and so important to continuously re-highlight that the contracted backlog for 2021 expectations is already currently signed into business. One of the key reasons I like STEM is because I believe that they have the key and the team to be able to deliver on this $147 million that they are currently promising for Q or for 2021 as far as revenue. This is largely going to be based on a tiered scale with the bulk of that delivery going to be at the end of this year. So let's take a look at what we have here on the screen, which is their earnings. Some of the highlights we want to talk about is that they were able to grow revenues to 15.4 million compared to 4 million last year. This 15.4 million is nearly or just a little bit higher than what we saw in Q4 of last year, albeit we that's just utilizing the breakdown that we saw from a percentage basis that we'll take a look at lower. The other items that I want to highlight is from a gross margin perspective, the company is actually decreasing their gross margin and that is because that they just received a huge pile of cash from the business combination and they are heavily reinvesting that back into the company. That's why that this is why we're seeing a net loss on their books where previously they have had no debt and they've been profitable. So we're actually seeing a net loss and that is expected to continue until 2023. So we're going to continue to watch that as they aim for additional profitability. And they have a 12 month pipeline of $1.43 billion. This is the area that I wanna talk about. So what we'll talk about here between the 12 month pipeline and the contracted backlog of $221 million is important to note. So the pipeline is this is open opportunity. When you hear the term total addressable market or TAM, this is included in that number. This is the group that the sales team is out actively trying to go and convert to business. The pipeline right here does not mean sales and they do not mean committed contracts. This is strictly you have an opportunity open in your CRM system, which for them may even be Salesforce, another favorite. What we're looking at here though is this contracted backlog. So the number that we've been promised for the 2021 revenue and that they've been holding up against is $147 million, which compared to last year's revenue of $34 million is a nearly 300% increase. They actually increased that backlog from about $150 million to $221 million. And that's a huge increase in something that we wanna be looking at because this is what they need to deliver on this calendar year to be able to basically in hit those numbers of a 300% increase in revenue. Now, this also enables to set them up for a beat by the end of the year. Admittedly, we'll have to watch to see if that occurs. So let's talk about the company and what we're doing so far. So here are some of the key metrics. The important thing is they are losing, but this is a heavy investment on the net loss side. We wanna see if this continues to decrease going forward, if it continues to increase, that could be cause for concern. But they are losing about $4 million on the adjusted EBITDA basis. So let's talk about just some of the financial results that we have already been pointing out is Q1 over Q1, again, Q1 being a relatively soft quarter traditionally or historically for them, they actually increased that total revenue 275%. They also are utilizing a lot of that sales with the hardware. So that is one of the reasons why we're expecting this gross margin to be lower because the bulk of the gross margin benefits associated with STEM is through their Athena platform. That is their software. That's where we can expect to see a higher gross margin. You're not going to see as high on the initial installation. Although again, we expect this to be higher going forward. And that net loss is due to the lower gross margin as well as the just EBITDA. The important thing that we wanna highlight though is from an overall company perspective, they are increasing their overall 
ALM or contracted assets under management significantly and we're expecting this to continuously grow. So right now we have 345 megawatts per hour with just a few of these names in here and that is expected to continuously grow. This operating results and some of the business highlights that we'll see down below is a huge benefit for the company from a marketability standpoint because we can anticipate this to grow and to build into very strong PR coverage for any potential government contracts. STEM did just hire or they have a position open for someone who specializes in government contracts. The current administration is very favorable to the clean energy system and the clean energy grid and we think that this is a strong proponent of the STEM plan going forward. So you see that increase in contracted backlog is just part of it. If they got some government money, I think it would be beneficial from them as well. So we're seeing that number go from 184 million to 221 million. That's not to be all delivered this calendar year, but it is showcasing what is readily available and what they have the capability to go and to deliver on. And then the business highlights, you see a number of items that are currently being pushed. Uh, by the way, I will include all of this information in the description down below via the link to this website, as well as the appropriate report that we're going to be looking at. And I've been covering this company since January. So if you find this type of content, especially over STEM helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. The important thing that I want to highlight here is they reaffirmed guidance of 147 million, despite the fact that they are already increasing that overall contracted backlog as well as the initial revenue in estimates. I think it's prudent that they are maintaining a conservative estimate here because it is overall still a 300% increase in total revenue. So as long as they are matching this approach, then I think that they've them the capability to potentially beat at the end of the year. Keep in mind that they are still expecting to hit revenue percentages as the following, 5 to 15% in Q2, Q3 and Q4 is when we see the big heavy hitters. It's going to be interesting to see in Q2 if we're closer to the 15% side because I think it's important to note that the more or the higher percentages that we can achieve, the more likely this $147 million is going to be hit. Q1 was the easy quarter overall. So let's continue to go through this in terms of the overall company financial statements. It's important to note that they had a large increase in the cash associated with the company, largely due to the fact that they went through the merger associated with Star Peak Energy Corp. Overall, they still have very little debt on the overall liability side of the balance sheet, and that's one of the reasons we really like the company going forward. Some of the things I also want to highlight here is the services revenue. This is largely the implementation is growing, albeit we don't expect that to be the huge increase. What was the huge increase is that hardware revenue that you can see here, as well as the total revenue, again, nearly $10 million. So that's what we're going to be looking at going forward. Next, let's talk about some of the overall profitability associated with the company where we see that adjusted EBITDA of negative $4 million. That's not exactly an exciting number for us to look at, but what we are seeing is that net loss of $82.5 million is somewhat concerning, but they are investing heavily back into the company. So all of this information then comes down into the overall company gross margin of non-GAAP 19%, and the non-GAAP gross margin from a dollar perspective is $2.90. So all of this looks down below from a prior quarter backlog as they increase from $184 to $221 a share. So how does this compare to what's previously been pitched or decided for the overall company? Well, let's go look at their prior presentation. So what you see here on the screen is the $36 million that they presented last year, as well as they have their $147 million target this calendar year. They are still actively targeting overall profitability in 2023, like I mentioned earlier. The important thing to note is, are they going to be able to do this on a profitable level? I'd like to see this turn profitable closer to the end of this year, despite the fact that they are spending a lot of money going forward. Overall, though, you can see just highlighting some of these numbers off to my right hand side, they're looking at having more than a billion dollars in a billion dollars in revenue in 2025 2026 time period. 
So let's talk about what this looks like from a pricing perspective. And I've talked about this a little bit on my Discord, which is in the description down below, but let's talk about it from a purely, how can we calculate this on a price to sales perspective in terms of a price target for the stock. So what you see on the screen, albeit most likely confusing, is my example or my expectations of share price based on current outstanding shares, the overall market cap, and what the share price is today. This is based off the chart that we were just looking at purely utilizing a price to sales expectation. As you can see right now, they're currently trading at about 50 times price to sales of the 2022 numbers, if not a little bit higher than that. With the guidance today, that changes just a little bit more because it's essentially another $50 worth of sales. The overall price to sales of 50X is a very high number, but that would line up with the 2021 price to sales ratio of $75.70 at 50X price to sales, which is a very high number. As you can see that this kind of gets drawn out the further to the right you go. And I believe I actually did 2026 is what we're looking at going all the way out here where the share price could be as high as $600 a share in 2026. Albeit again, this is just some price to sales expectations based off of what their expected sales are going to be. So I thought that this needed to be a little bit more appropriate because right now we're basing this off year end numbers and we don't really have that expectation going forward. So let's take a look over here. So what I've done and you can see some of the math in here is that I've actually built this out associated with two different scenarios depending on the outstanding shares at any given point in time. What you see above is current total diluted share potential and what you see below is the current shares outstanding. So this is not inclusive of any additional share issuances. This is just what they could offer by current insiders who are holding right now. So right now this is based off of their total sales on a trailing 12 month basis. So this is saying going back historically, what would our sales be? So this 44 million is what we would expect on a trailing 12 months basis. So based off of the sales that we saw today as well as the prior 12 months, and that's utilizing their cyclical sales that we saw earlier with the 15% basis going forward. So I understand that that's a lot of numbers going back and forth, uh, but stick with me and I promise that it will be beneficial. So what we see here is based off of a Q4 price to sales ratio expectation. So right now, based off of full year Q4 results at a 20X sales price, we're still about two and a half dollars underneath that expectation here. However, not only do I think that there is potential to actually beat the share price here, but I actually think that we could see it go even higher if they go higher than the $147 million right here. That would put not only 100 or not only the 20x sales, but people may be willing to pay a premium for some of these numbers on the right hand side. So all in all, these are just some of my fundamentally based sales expectations, simply utilizing a price to sales ratio. With my expectation here, I'm still actively looking at holding this for a long term investment primarily to 2025. I talk about the channel all the time about building a 2025 portfolio. So utilizing what we see here on the screen, even under a highly dilutive scenario, we are actually still looking at potential 20% upside from current levels at a Q4 expectation. And that looks very, very strong despite the fact that the market climate is not always super exciting due to the inflation fears we keep hearing about. However, the same metric under the Q4 under current shares outstanding is actually looking a lot closer to a 50% increase as opposed to a 20% increase where the stock could nearly go from $19 a share all the way up north of $30 a share. Keep in mind that most of the competitors in the space, such as ChargePoint or even Sunrun, are currently trading at anywhere between 40 to as much as 80x per share. So really what we're going to be looking at as future catalysts is going to be A, the potential for a government contract. They've hired someone with the explicit purpose of doing so, as well as another fact that we wanna be looking for is are they able to execute on these Q2 and Q3 sales numbers? Again, these are the trailing 12 months numbers. So that's what we're expecting to see here, trailing 12 months. So if these numbers actually go up at all or at the bare minimum, if they're being hit, then that bodes very well for the overall stock price. 
So keep in mind this is again just using price to sales ratios and my potential expectation and how the industry may be trading. I'm by no means a a financial advisor and this is just the opinion of some guy on YouTube. But I do think that there's a lot of potential in viewing this information and looking at this going forward. If all of this is the case, then I am still actively looking to be a shareholder at these levels. So this is all just my opinion, but I hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to talk about it, drop a comment down below or join the Discord and we'll talk there. Thanks for your time today and I will talk to you later.